Got to plug in, so I can. How you guys doing this morning? Yeah. Awesome. Get ready for some shock and awe. <laughs> Not really. Let's just get this going. So yeah, um, my name is Andrew Quarry, and I'm the founder of Journid, Journid.com, J-U-R-N-I-D.com, and essentially, uh, what the platform does is that we connect freelance writers from around the globe with brands and uh, businesses who are looking for content. So as you know, uh, nowadays you can't really do effective marketing unless you're doing editorial pieces. Blogging is back, people, okay? Uh, just like podcasts, it's all full circle. Uh, that's because, you know, the good old uh, display ads, uh, SEM, uh, it's not the only tool that's you know, effective anymore. Um, now we, we have to pull customers in and have them stick around with our brands and read stories. So if you ever are in need of uh, content, uh, I highly suggest that you go on to journey.com and create a free account to get started. So it's not about me today, right? It's not about journey. It's about empathy. And it's going to get a little bit awkward for a second here, but bear with me. Turn to your neighbor, the person you're sitting next to, and I want you to literally hold their hand, in hand in hand. Do this. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna. It's, it, it's gonna get even more awkward. Look them in the eyes. <laughs> now. Now I want you to look on the screen at the next slide, and I want you to look at your neighbor and say exactly what I put up. All right, scouts on it. You're going to do it? Are you going to do it? All right, let's do this. All right. Come on, say it. What? 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 What, what happened? All right, you can release now. You can release. You can release. You can, uh, hey, listen, if you want to go to the rooftop and shout it from the rooftop, that's up to you. So, why did I do that? How did we get from, hello neighbor, Mr. Roger, God bless his soul. How did we get from there to here as, you know, people, as a people? How do we get from, you know, telling people that we care about them to then giving them the middle finger. And I think that, you know, if you look at sort of where we're coming from as individuals, you know, we get shaped by our experiences very early on. And uh, one of the, the first experience that we, we have coming out of our mom's womb, so to speak, is that there is a, an effort to protect, there's an, uh, an effort to shield this young child as they're, you know, being taught, raised, you know, the whole point is to get you to independence as quickly as possible and effectively with the, the least amount of damage. And so we, we essentially, oh, by the way, <laughs> Com Comic Sans always wants to steal a show, you know? You know, it's like Comic Sans matters, people, okay? You know, it, it's, it's one fond plea for acceptance, okay? just like the rest of us. So before I dive in, so we have in the United States last year 
over 62 million people who had an out-of-body experience. Do you believe me? 62 million people had an out-of-body experience last year. I'll dive into that a little bit. So when you came out of your mom's womb, they swaddled you. You guys know what swaddling is? Okay. I have two, two children. I have um, a boy and a girl. Uh, they're 10 and 13. Yes, I just got into the teenage years. <laughs> and she, it's a girl. <laughs> so I hear it's pretty interesting. So here we go. Um, but I remember, you know, that we, I used to wrap her up like a burrito, you know, it was so cute. You know, she was this uh, little thing that I wanted to protect. And so I swaddled her. And, you know, if you were to kind of trace back to the whole sort of like protection that we get since the moment we get into this life, um, it, it kind of shapes us in the way we approach others, right? We're always about our own personal space. It's always about us. It's about what we do, what we want. And let's keep our layers and our mask and our walls so that we don't get hurt and, you know, we don't let anyone else in. So protection is huge. It's huge for us. But it, it starts there, you know, as a child. You didn't start it, but your parents did. And you, you unconsciously continue that process. And, and there's nothing wrong with being protected, right? I mean, it's, it's survival. It's, it's about comfort. And, you know, one, no one's going to be uh, careless and throw caution to the wind. However, this is what happens. We get swaddled in childhood, but we continue to build this cocoon as we get older. We're not thinking empathy, right? We're not thinking empathy. We're thinking about ourselves. And so with that said, we do for selfie. We live in a time right now where, you know, aided by technology, we have the ability to do so many things. You know, uh, we don't have to own a car because there's Uber, right? Uh, we don't have to go to uh, Hilton's anymore because there's Airbnb. And uh, we don't have to go pick up our food because there's Postmates. And, we don't have to call FedEx anymore because they're shipped. I mean, we can go on and on and on and on. So we have an app for every aspect of our lives, and it's all about personalization. You know, so, and personalization is great. You know, we have what we call the feel-good algorithm. And all those things kind of build within that ecosystem of what is the feel-good algorithm. It's about us. It's about how we feel. It's about, you know, we get, getting what we want in the moment that we want it. We hit a button, and... Yay, you know, come deliver it to me. And again, I'm not knocking those things. Those are great. You know, you search Google, and based upon your location, you know, and a few other details that you provided them over the years, you didn't know that they were a data company, essentially collecting every little bit of information they can, so they can personalize your search results, right? They, they personalize based upon your geolocation, you know, good old GPS, and a few other elements, your IP address, and bam. We're going to give you what's the closest restaurant. We're going to give you even the time when they're the busiest. Everything is tailored to us. It's about us. But then comes empathy, right? What is empathy? It's your ability, right, to put yourself in someone else's place. It requires a little bit of getting outside of yourself. It's about imagining what someone else is going through without having to actually go through it yourself. But here's also an important part. Some of us have gone through some stuff, and it allows us to have a better empathy engine, I like to say, because you can relate. It's like when you're, you know, hardening your cocoon as you, you grew out of childhood, you know, at recess, some of these uh, <laughs> incidences at, um, at recess uh, contributed to you growing very jaded, right, and being very protective. You know, it's like someone took your lunch money, you know? Bitch better have my money, right? Um, <laughs> so people took, took your lunch money, they were bullying you, they didn't like your outfit, you know, the zits on your face, you just like, it was god awful. You didn't, you didn't want to roll out of bed. But these experiences shaped you and it caused you to become the person that you are today. And so, a lot of that also should be able to contribute to your empathy engine, how well you're able to relate to others who have gone through the same thing. 
But what if you've never been through this stuff? I mean, you, you saw the, that image from you know, these refugee, refugees fleeing from Syria. You've never fleed, fled from, uh, from um, Syria. You've never had to be in a ref, refugee, refugee situation. But they're humans, right? So you can, you can identify with that commonality that we're humans. And there, there ought to be a level of care that's given to just that very basic concept. You're a human, I am a human, okay? So therefore, please do care. Do handle with care. Think of me, consider me. So when I spoke earlier about the 6, you know, 62.8 million people who had an out-of-body experience, I know many of you probably thought, you know, hey, we're, we're gonna be watching the show Medium and all of a sudden we're gonna have the seance and, and their ghosts and whatnot. And that's not what I meant. So this, is, this number is from the Department of uh, Labor, and these are volunteers, okay? Over 62 million people volunteered last year. Different organizations, blacks, whites, Asians, you know, Hispanics, all race, all culture, are counted in that number. They got outside of themselves. They considered others. These are non-paid work, and so, they were putting empathy in action. So it's one thing to imagine something, but then of course you have to take action. You have to then decide, okay, what am I going to do with this feeling inside of me that says, you know, I should be caring. You know, I, I, I should get up and take action. It's not all about me. So these people did. And we, we definitely want to get to that point where we have an out of body experience. That's a point today for me. And what I mean by the, that out-of-body experience is get outside of ourselves, even when it's uncomfortable. Because it is, it is uncomfortable to get outside of ourselves. But until we get outside of ourselves, we're not able to actually see the reality of who we can become as individuals and collectively. Because this is a, this is a collective sport. This, this walk, this journey that you're on, you did not make it here by yourself this life that you, you've lived so far. Uh, you have a lot of contributors. There are a lot of people that put some serious time in getting out of, outside of themselves to make you happen today. And uh, how about paying that forward? You know, how about paying that forward? And I think that's very important, not only in volunteerism, but you know, like I said, you wouldn't necessarily go up to your neighbor and, and, and like I did in the very beginning, and just hold their hands and look in their eyes and say, you know what, I'm not gonna say it to you. <laughs> it's uncomfortable, you wouldn't do that, but that's essentially what we do, we're flipping people off when we see them going through things and we turn a blind eye because we're too busy, we're too, we're too much in a hurry to get somewhere, you know? And I know a lot of you sometimes, you know, I mean, I, I drove here all the way from Miami, so, you know, talk about out-of-body experience on the highway. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get outside myself not to flip a few, you know, a few people off, whatever. But, you know, you think about the fact that we have this ability to imagine. We have a mind to imagine. Start with that. Because, you know, co compassion, empathy, you have to be like a child. A child has vivid imagination. You know, creativity is at the center of what they do. You know, you take them to a daycare and there's colors, there are blocks, there's shapes, there's everything around you around them, and it's designed, of course, for cognitive development, but we're just creative from the get-go. And, and children, you know, they're always coming up with stuff, you know, from their imaginary friends, okay, to, to brilliantly being able to bo be born in the digital world, and they know how to handle this better than their parents, okay, in no time, a device like this. So why aren't we childlike anymore? Why have we allowed ourselves to take that swaddle, go from being swaddled to this thick cocoon that's ha that has kind of encased what is our empathy engine? You know, it's kind of locked us in to not being able to release and say, you know what, I'll be vulnerable. I'll, I'll step outside myself and I'll help you. I see your struggle, you know? Don't superficially ask me how I'm doing today and just keep on walking, <laughs> okay? Hey, how you doing? Great, okay, I'm, yeah, okay. <laughs> you don't really wanna hear it, do you? Of course not. 
you know, and, and in your email signature, uh, you know, have a blessed day. But you know, you, you reply with something that doesn't you know you don't like, and you're 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 dropping some choice words. The bumper sticker, right? I love Jesus, <laughs> but they'll cut you off in traffic. Okay, yeah, and they'll flip you the bird. <laughs> Jesus loves you, man. Okay. Yeah, Jesus does love you. Um, so, how do we get outside of ourselves? This is Stella. That's my mom. <laughs> Okay. In 1973, uh, I'm going to give away my age now. That's when I was born. Three years later, this lady left from Jamaica, I guess because this is where I'm, I'm from. She left Jamaica like a lot of moms would do, to go find work elsewhere so they can better their family. I mean, I applaud women. I mean, come on, seriously? I want to applaud you guys. <laughs> She left, and you know she had five kids. I'm the youngest of the, the boys, one, one girl, my sister. And I didn't see her for another, I would say, yeah, 10, 11 years, because she left Jamaica, went to England, from England to, to Canada, and eventually in the States. Because the end goal was always coming to the States, okay? So but by route of, 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 of England. Um, and in that time, of course, you know, we were pen pals, you know, we would write, she would send me images, you know, I, I was always longing for her. And, you know, I don't want to make, the, you know, make this a very long story, but after these years, the reason why she had to stay away was because, you know, once you leave and, you know, overextend yourself, overextend your stay with your visa, you can't go back or else you, you will definitely not leave Jamaica ever again or the country because, you know, you violated a policy. So she just kept on until she figured a way to get us. So she worked hard, worked her ass off, and took, sent for visas for every single one of her kids to be in this country as a way of giving them, giving them an opportunity to, to, to leave, live a better life, to make a difference themselves. And I'm a product of that, okay? She stepped, side, she stepped outside herself. She, 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 for me, mom, Stella is the ultimate example for me of that out-of-body experience because she was selfless, you know, and I do not resent her at all for those years that I missed, honestly. I've never resented her for that because I understood what that meant. So everyone has a Stella, and you could be a Stella for someone else, you know. Who is it that you need to sponsor in life? Who is it you need to be there for when no one else is, you know, there for them? Use your imagination. I mean, we're designers. A lot of us are creatives in this room. You know, when we sit down to actually design, whether it's a website, a logo, a brand ID, whatever it might be, we use our imagination. We, we start to think, okay, well, this client is such and such. They have a certain edge. I might want to use these kind of shapes maybe suggest a couple colors, okay, so I could speak to their brand image. You guys are brilliant at that stuff, okay? Shape a marketing campaign, for instance. Well, think about the person. Approach it the same way. I know Susie, I know Matt. You know, this is what I've seen of their, live, their lives. But I'm not gonna start a project on them unless I've had a client brief. Your client brief is to meet that person, okay? Don't say hi from afar. Go get coffee, you know? Sit down with someone if you want to, know, you want to get to know them and have them speak to you. Just the way you would do customer research. You, you don't, you're not going to produce for your customers if you don't know who they are. I mean, that's kind of shooting in the dark, isn't it? Get, what, get to know who it is that you're trying to sponsor. Okay, see what their needs are and create. Because empathy is creativity as well. It is about you stepping out, imagining, and then put into work put into practice the things that you've learned to, to address a certain need and, of course, get outside of your body. You know, love is not something that's, love is talked about a lot. It's very messy because relationships are messy. And this is one of the reasons why, you know, nowadays we talk about machine learning, artificial intelligence, 
robotics, automation. Why? And I've heard this said, because dealing with people, it's too messy. People get sick, people take vacations, so we don't want to deal with that, okay? That's what corporations are saying. So even in China, okay, where you thought, okay, free, you know, cheap labor was in abundance. Well, yes, the labor is cheap, but what they're finding out is that, yeah, they want, in order to squeeze more out of this operation, let's get robotics. Let's get into robotics as much as we can for the process and automate this process because I don't have to deal with a sick day. I don't have to deal with you know, a bitch and uh, worker. You know? I don't want to have to deal with, oh, a mom has to leave to go take care of her sick kid. So we are losing that edge, not only in corporate America, but that trickles down to us as well, or just corporations in, gen in general. It's not just America because people are the same wherever you go. It's just shade, different shades of colors and culture. But essentially, we're the same. We're all, we're all battling the same issues. So to be empathetic, <coughs> relationships are not cut, you know, cookie cutter. They get messy at times. And you just have to, to, to be willing to take a chance on getting dirty uh, because no one leaves this life unscathed. You know? We're all going to go through stuff. But your, your ability to pay it forward is what makes this so rich and so beautiful because you, you're not thinking about yourself. So now you can look at your neighbor, look them in the eye, and say, I love you. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I know. I, I, even that is awkward, I mean, you know, because we're not even used to that. You know, we're not even used to that much, right? <laughs> Sounds so foreign. Sound, sounds like such a foreign idea. I mean, we hear it all the time. But when you actually look someone in the eye and tell them, I love you, I mean, that's deep. So I started this hashtag. It hasn't gotten traction yet because, but you guys are going to make it happen. I, I give, you, give you full creative freedom to steal it. Use it whenever you can. But whenever you see some sort of, something's wrong, okay, online. Okay, because we, we, we spew things out of our mouth in our comment section in social media like there's no, there's no one police in us, right? I mean, if you want to see a cesspool of human thoughts, <laughs> go to the comment section on Facebook or any, uh, I mean, Twitter. I mean, LinkedIn, you won't get it because it's a professional network. We've got to keep our mask on, you know, keep the cocoon going. Um, but the things that people say, you would think that with... The, 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 the things that were implemented, I remember, you know, authenticating people, right? So is that a true account? Is that a fake account? But people are, they're using their, their, their real names, right? Real images. They're real people. And they don't care. There used to be a fear before about what you put online. But now it's like everyone's so comfortable. It's second nature to just quickly respond to something. Right? But whenever you see something awry in the world, whether it's, you know, a, a Michael Brown shooting, Syria, I don't know, someone getting wronged, use this, use this hashtag. Because think about that. Love can end a lot of the crap that's going on in this world. If we were just made a, made a decision that we're gonna be empathetic towards someone else, our, our, our fellow human. Put aside the nonsense, okay, of politics and whose side you're on and realize, hey, dummy, you're living on the same planet, okay? You gotta treat it well, okay? We all have same needs, okay? We wanna be loved, we wanna be cared for. So why is it that we're pretending like that's not an issue? So whenever you see something go, gone awry on social media and you're expressing your, your thoughts and opinions as well, use that hashtag. Love can end this. May, maybe you will catch on. You know, who knows? And we'll, we'll all learn to be empathetic. So, guys. That's my talk. My name is Andrew Quarry.